Pastor Galen Kay, congratulations. And because I haven't had the chance to say it yet this morning, surprise. <laughs> I do have to say, <laughs> I do have to say that I am relieved that this day has finally come. You know my personality so well, and all of these secret late night staff meetings and secret board meetings have just been weighing on my conscience. So I'm glad that we're here today and you know what's going on. Seriously, it is an honor and a privilege today to get to speak for just a moment and share my heart. For those of you who do not know me, Copper Point has been my church home since high school. Pastor Galen and Kay have been my pastors for over 30 years, and I have been on staff for 13 years. I walked into Powerhouse Youth Ministry as a young teenager who had been raised in the Catholic religion since birth, and believing that living a godly life was all about rules, regulations, and traditions. The idea of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ was so foreign to me. As I continued to attend their youth group, they loved me, they taught me, and one night at an altar call during a youth service, Pastor Galen prayed with me as I accepted Christ into my heart. Pastor Galen is also personally responsible for setting me up with the best part of my life, my husband of 26 years, Clark. <laughs> Kay was in the delivery room for the birth of my first child, my daughter Elise, and together as a couple, they have walked through some of the best of times and some of the worst of times with us. Our families have played together and we have cried together. 13 years ago, when they took a chance on me and brought me on staff, I thought filing papers and entering data into a computer was the extent of my talents. They both pushed me, mentored me, and brought me to a place of leadership that I didn't even know was inside of myself. And although the relationship I have with them is so valuable and the memory so precious, I do realize today that I do not have a unique story by any means. There are hundreds of stories in this very room today just like mine. Many of you sitting here today have personally experienced the love, support, and guidance of this incredible couple and ministry. What I do have is a unique perspective. You see, I have had the incredible privilege of watching them live out the very word of God that they bring before us each week in their day, daily, day-to-day -day lives. Pastor Galen and Kay are two of the most genuine, committed Christ followers that I have ever met. Through my relationship with them, I have had front row seats to their family life, their professional life, and their personal life. And I am here today to say that I honor you for bringing the word of God into the flesh and living it out authentically and intentionally, step by step in front of all of us. You see, they are no different than you and I. They face the same heartbreaks, challenges, struggles, temptations, joys, and victories that we all do. They have suffered cruel blows to their ministry, their family, and their reputations at times over the years. They struggle day to day, just like you and I, to have a successful marriage. They face the same obstacles of parenting three children that you and I would. They laugh and cry and succeed and bleed just like you and I. Through all that life has thrown at them, they have fought the fight. They have stayed the course. They have kept the faith. Thank you, Pastor Galen and Kay, for not giving up. For Thank you for pressing through. Thank you for being a living, breathing example of what Christ meant when he said, follow me. I love you both with all of my heart. Now it is my privilege 
to call to the stage three of the most godly young men that I have the honor of working side by side with each week, Pastor Galen and Kay's sons, Dr. Jonathan Woodward, Pastor Dufton, and Pastor Brandon. Look out. I would be a doctor, but. <laughs> no, you know you wouldn't. <laughs> I would not trust him with uh, doctoral type things. But I never thought I would trust this guy with that kind of stuff either. So, um, <laughs> that was awesome, Karen. And, and uh, one, I, one thing that I really took from that on a non serious note is your youth ministry was called Powerhouse. All right. Um, <laughs> I guess it was like the early 90s, so that was cool. Uh, 80s, the 80s. I was trying to make you sound younger than you really are, Dad. Just go with it. Um, well, in, in the planning meetings, my idea was to do a roast today, uh, but that, no, nobody else was on that same page, so we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, but hey, we, we have the, 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 if you don't know what a roast is, you just... I mean, make fun of them for like 30 minutes straight. It's really kind of hurtful, but uh, they're fun. <laughs> but we, uh, I mean, we're, we've all been pretty close our entire lives, and, and this is such an honor and privilege today just to be able to sit up here and talk a little bit about our, our mom and dad. And, you know, you guys see them every, every week on this stage. Um, you know, my dad preaching, my mom up here singing, or if you don't see her up here singing, she's running everything else that you're not seeing behind the scenes and right here on the stage, and that's where a lot of you guys know them, but we kind of have the unique perspective of getting to know them in the home. You know, what are they like as a mom and dad? What are they like as pastors? And what are they like, you know, in their marriage? And so we're going to kind of hit on the different aspects. And uh, today, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about you guys in, in ministry. And, you know, ministry was something that it's all I've ever known. I'm 23 years old. They were the senior pastors. Um, I guess when I was three years old, you guys became the senior pastors. You could see me in the picture. I'm, I'm a baby, you know. And uh, I, this is all I ever have known. I don't remember anything different. My dad's always been the pastor. I was a little kid running around saying, don't tell me what to do. My dad runs this place, you know. And um, that's how I got to grow up. And I know these guys got to do that too. And, um, and get spankings for it. Yeah, yeah you would. We, they didn't like, let us do that. I, I think I said it twice. And then uh, not anymore after the, the spankings. But um, you were allowed to spank in the 90s. But yeah, for those of you judging my mom and dad, it was still okay. Um, <laughs> except I don't, I'm saying stuff I shouldn't be saying. But I, would, uh, I went through a phase where I would pass out if they spanked me because I'd cry so hard. So they had to stop. So if there's any little kids in here, just start. Hold your breath. You can do it. Um, I don't know. What am I talking about, guys? I don't know. I don't know. It's, I have like a thing here. I'm just... That's why he's to... not a doctor. Keep going. But... <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, but really, really with, with ministry, um, it's something that I felt called to at a young age because I got to watch my dad do it. And I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And uh, I got called to it probably when I was 13 years old at a camp. But then I, I ran from it for a little while because I just... I didn't want to just do ministry because my dad did it and because my brother did it and, and everybody thought, you know, that's just, that's just assumed. Well, yeah, you're going to be a pastor. Everybody does it. And I, I ran from it for a while, but really I just, after continuing to come to church here and getting to watch my mom and dad on this stage every week, it just, it became something that I knew I just couldn't live without, you know, and, and, and now I'm, I'm in this thing full swing. I've been doing the college young adults ministry for almost 20, or for almost 20, for almost two years. Um, <laughs> For almost two years now, I'm not as cool as 20, but, um, and, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to talk about myself, I just, I say that because I wouldn't be doing that and loving what I did, do unless I got to see you doing it, Dad, and, and you're my favorite preacher in the whole world, um, I mean, I take pages and pages of notes, yeah, and um, I think the greatest thing about a preacher is when you, yeah, I mean, you, you hear him every week, and you can get so used to your preacher where you get to this point where you don't appreciate him anymore, but I want to challenge everybody, come into this place every week knowing that he's worked his tail off the entire week to come bring you something, and if you really, I mean, if you're listening and taking notes, I mean, I, I end up looking at the end of these sermons, and I've got three or four pages of notes that can just add to my life, and I just wanted to say thank you for that, Dad, for the hard work you put in every week to bring us the word, and you're not a heretic, and I love that. You, you bring truth, 
And uh, I really appreciate that in you guys. And with both of my parents, the biggest thing in ministry that I take from you guys that I'm going to emulate my whole life is that it's, it's about you guys. And I don't mean that as in like you, this big broad thing, you individually sitting in your seat. It's about you. And, and my dad, I mean, you don't, you don't get in trouble in a staff meeting for having low attendance at a service or, you know, if you preached kind of poorly or if you led worship poorly. You get in trouble if you weren't out in the atrium greeting people. He's about the person. We have to be out there. We're about the people, the individual. And I've never seen somebody, a pastor especially, that was so into just the one person. And you may come here and think, I'm a part of a big church. I'm mean, going to look how many people are in here. But if you ever stop him, he's never just going to blow past you. It's about you individually. And, and I love that about him, Dad. And that's something that I'm going to take with me the rest of my life is that it's about the person. It's not about a crowd. And, um, you know, there's too many pastors that, that they love a big crowd, but they don't like people anymore. And he's the opposite of that. I mean, he, yeah, he loves the crowd because the more people in here, that's better for, for this ministry, but it's going to always be about you. And I wanted to hit on my mom with that same thing because I've never seen somebody, and I'm going to wrap up, I'm not going long, but I've never seen somebody who is so relentless after one person. I mean, there are people sitting in this room that would not be here if it wasn't for my mom and how, just how relentless she was in chasing after people. And, um... And, and I know I, I won't give, an, I think she's even given a testimony before, but my mom's gym trainer, I mean, she invited her a million times and just finally guilt tripped her into coming. And, and then, you know, she came a couple times and was like, I don't really know. My mom's like dragging her into this church and, and she just applied for the Copper Point School of Leadership. And it's just, I mean, it, it's, it's insane. You, and um, so from the both of you guys, I just wanted to say in ministry, just here at this church, and to everybody, know that it's, it's not about the church as, as a whole. It's not about just this big, broad, abstract church. It's about you. And, and that's something I'm going to take with me my whole life, Dad, is, is preaching on the stage to everyone and then getting off that stage. No matter how good or bad I preach, I will talk to every person that wants to talk to me. I will invest in every person that I possibly can. And, Mom, I will chase after people as hard as I possibly can my entire life. And I love you guys. And you're such an encouragement to me. And you guys are why I do this because ministry is not easy. And it's not always fun, but you guys are the thing that keeps me going. So I love you guys, and I appreciate you. Sorry, that was long. So I'm looking at the timer here, and Brandon took up, like, our entire time. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, wow. So a lot of you probably don't know me. I'm the middle son, Jonathan. Um, I'm not quite as visible as the rest of my family. Uh, I want to give just a quick, uh, different perspective from, from my point of view. Um, you look at the rest of my family. My dad's a senior pastor. My mom is uh, running around everywhere with the worship team, the creative team. Um, these guys are the high school pastor, the college pastor, and I'm the pharmacist. So it's um, a little bit different. The drug dealer. So what yes. you're saying is you're the smart one. Yes, I'm the smart one is what they say. Um, but uh, so I have that different perspective, kind of um, not being so around the church 24-7. Um, I'm here as much as I can, volunteering with the kids, things like that. Um, but I get the question, the last couple of years, people have asked me, have you ever been pressured into going to the ministry with the rest of your family? Um, I've always wondered, if, have people thought, you know, do I think I'm a disappointment or like a letdown for, for not going to the ministry? And it's the exact opposite. Um, no matter what we've done since we were little kids all the way up until now in our professional careers, anything that we're called to at that moment, anything, um, any of our gifts, our parents have been behind us 100%. And whatever we're doing, they, they not only support us, but they push us to be the best we could possibly be. Whether it be like these guys, you know, speaking every week or in my professional career being a pharmacist, um, you know, growing up in school, they pushed me to do my absolute best. Um, even growing up when I was younger playing football, uh, a couple things, mom, like one word that comes to mind is just a motivator. Um, you know, Brandy kind of touched that she's just a go-getter. And, um, you know, two days come around, she would, you know, kick our butts out the door to get to practice. And... And she instilled in us from a young age never to quit. You know, whatever we're doing, we see it through to the end. And um, whether it's tough, whether it's, you know, difficult, we're, we're sticking through it. So um, that's really stuck with me now growing up through football. Um, when school was tough and I was struggling in some of those math classes, my mom was the first person to go find a tutor for me and, and to get me going. Um, I'd had some rough times back in middle school with that, and, and she uh, really got me through that. And, you know, thank you so much for, for being relentless with us, and that's always going to stick with me. Um, another thing, too, is she's kept our family so strong the last couple of years. She's uh, got us all together on Monday nights with, with dinner, with all our schedules being so crazy. It's hard for our family to spend time together. And, and the family aspect is so important to, to, my, to my parents that no matter how busy they are, no matter how stressed out they are with church, we're getting together on Monday night for dinner as a family. Um, so thank you so much for that as well. 
And, and Dad, really quick, um, a word that comes to mind it, with you is just compassion. Um, you're always there for us. You're always, even in the little things, the big things, you're always going to be our biggest fan. I mean, I think all three of us can attest to the fact when we were in high school playing football, nine times out of ten during practice, we would look up at the parking lot, and my dad's sitting there in his car um, studying for sermon while watching us practice, and he would never miss a practice. One quick story, when I was in fifth grade, my football team made it to the Super Bowl, and I didn't know this at the time, but we were playing on a Sunday afternoon, and the, the game was starting, and my dad was preaching the, the last service, and he wasn't going to be able to make it, so he ended up ending the service early so he could book it out there and make it to my game, and I was hardly even playing, but it was that important to him to make it to my game that uh, he would not miss it for anything. Um, and it's funny, because even now, when I'm a pharmacist working late nights, um, randomly on his way home from uh, the church on a late night, he'll just stop in randomly like at 9 o'clock at night and buy a pack of gum from me. <laughs> and, and he'll just stop by and, and he'll just buy a pack of gum and he'll just want to see how my day is going. Um, he'll stop by and chat for a few minutes and he's so wanting to be a part of my life. Um, even when I first started pharmacy school, I was doing an internship at a, at a pharmacy and the first day I was there, I thought I saw my dad's head between the aisles. <laughs> and I was like, is that my dad? And, and then he just disappeared. And, and later my mom told me that you were spying on me. Um, <laughs> He wanted to see how my first day was going, so. It, it's funny because, like, at Wake, when Brandon's preaching, you'll see my dad upstairs in the darkness just kind of standing there watching us. And, and when, at a high school service, he's watching me. And what's funny is he, he hides in the aisles watching him. So Jonathan's back there cutting pills. He's like, you got this, Jonathan. You got this, you know. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it just goes to show that no, no matter how much weight is on their shoulders, no matter what's going on with the church, you guys are always there for us, um, and I know that no matter what's going on in my life and the three of us, that you guys are going to be our biggest fans always, and you're going to be there for us no matter what. Um, when my wife and I, we start a family, these principles will be with me the rest of my life, uh, raising our own family. It's, it, it's going to be a principle I'll never forget, so I love you guys, and thank you so much. Who, who thinks he could have been a pastor? Because he can speak, right? He can speak. No, he, you're a good speaker. Um, I, I'm going to talk just for a second about you know, my perspective. With me being the oldest, I've, I have obviously the most memories of uh, them being youth pastors and, and the transition from being youth pastors into senior pastor. And um, they went through a, a very rough time in ministry and, uh, right when I was about 11 years old. They had been seen, very young senior pastors of the church 20 years ago. And um, there was, they were aggressively wanting to reach the city and to reach the world and take, bring evangelism into our church and to see people saved and baptized, what the vision should be. But believe it or not, there was a large number of people in the church that did not want to reach people. They wanted to stay the same. They wanted to um, it, you know, just care for them and their family. And although that's important, we're called to reach the world, right? And so there is a strong vision to change where are the young people in our church? Why aren't we baptizing more? Why aren't people coming and receiving hope more and receiving Christ? So this transition started happening, and um, there was a large group of people that not only ended up leaving the church, but to be honest with you, I, I, with my own eyes when I was 11 years old, saw some of the most evil things I had ever seen from a human being, much less a Christian. And I remember being 11 years old, staying, standing in the foyer with my dad, and people would be walking by my dad and just some of the cr mo most cruel words you could ever imagine. We're never coming back. You're the worst preacher I've ever heard. You're this, you're that, and just slamming. I remember being 11 years old, standing next to him, and I remember my dad looking down at me and almost fearful of what, I, what was gonna happen to my future, my perception of ministry, my perception of Christians. And you could see this concern in his eyes, thinking he should not be watching this happen. But what's so interesting, I remember barely understanding what was going on and all these people leaving and writing these horrible letters to my parents and these horrible rumors. And this is what I will take for the rest of my life. There is a story and an instance I will never forget. And I will tell my kids and tell my kids to tell their kids. I remember one night, 11 years old, laying in my bed and I had woken up at about midnight or one and pitch dark, quiet in the house. And I could hear my dad talking. And I, my room was upstairs, and I remember just going to my door and then going down the stairs, up the stairs, and going over to where he was at. And he was in the guest room at the house. And I sat outside the door, and I could hear him talking. And I listened closely, and in the middle of the night, he was in there. I could hear him crying and praying at the top of his lungs. And what I heard him praying is something I'll never forget ever. 
his prayer was the list of all of the people that were walking out of the doors and slamming him and the letters and the cruelty and the evil that was taking place. Every single person that had hurt him, he was calling their names in prayer to bless them. And he was calling out their kids and saying, God, bless them, pray for them, the Father. And I remember being 11 years old, sitting outside of the door and understanding one thing, and this is what you taught me, Dad, is that people, people don't dictate what God can do in your life. People don't dictate a calling. They don't dictate our happiness. And even if they try, you love them anyways because Jesus did. And, and that's what I've taken from my dad. And yeah. And uh, last little tidbit. I'm having to go fast because Brandon talked too long. I'm joking. Um, the, one other quick little story, and, and I, I remember also during this period of time, there's just, there's just so much pain it, you know, to go through this period of time. And I remember even he listened to my parents in the kitchen, and my dad would, had a very successful student ministry. The church had already started growing, and people were actually contacting my parents and giving them offers to pastor in other parts of the country at the exact time of their lowest low at this church. It would have been so easy to go, you know what? We're out. But I remember my parents talking in the kitchen. Again, you guys still don't even know this. They were talking in the kitchen. I was around the corner, and my dad was mentioning a specific church. And he said, no, 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 no. God called us to this church and to this city. Hell and high water, we're making this happen. And, and that was another thing. Don't ever quit. Don't ever quit. Don't ever quit. When God's called you to something, you stay to it, and you see it through. And then with my mom, you know, also going through this season of time, my mom really stepped up and became you know, the true helpmate, partner, ministry partner to my dad. This is when she really elevated to that position uh, of being there for him and walking through this season with him. I just want to say something very clearly and very plainly. This church would not be what it is without my mom, Kay Woodward. It would not be what it is. And I want to make that very clear. And a lot of times when you get to know my mom, She's funny, she's hilarious, but most of the time what the wording that you get from her about her is go-getter, driven, tenacity, and all those things are true. But I also know, and, and, you, and many of you know, the side of my mom that's the nurturing, I'm gonna cry with you. I, all the heartbreaks you know, in high school and college that we went through, and, and you know, if there was a girl or a heartbreak or a friendship, I could walk into my mom's room, my lips start quivering, just go, I'm like 18 years old, mama, you know? And walking in, and I remember laying my head on her lap, being a grown man, not too long ago, just a few years ago. I'm, I'm not joking. Laying my head in her lap and her putting her hand on my head and just saying, God, guard my son. Guard my son. And you, the nurturing side of my mom has also changed my life, and my parents have changed our lives. And the biggest thing that we want to say is this, and I'm wrapping it up, is this. My parents are the real deal. What you see up here is what you get out there every single day. They are the real deal. Love you guys. Um, we're going to take a, a transition here, and, and I've been talking to you guys some about this. My dad has no clue that we're going to do this today. Um, my dad, over the last two years, has t undertaken a massive project um, you know, in his life. And uh, it, it's massive because he's written his very first book. His very first book. And... The book, I'm going to, um, in just a second, I'm going to have them, in just a second, I'm going to have them bring stuff up on the screens and show you what's going on. But the reason why this is such a massive undertaking is because he typed it on his iPad like this. Like this. <laughs> Poor guy was born right after the period of time where people were really technologically savvy. Um, I'm joking. So the book is completed. And what, what we're going to do right now is um, one of our great friends of our church and, and st former staff member and really an extended family member of us, I'm going to invite Jonathan Flores to the stage real fast. Um, yeah. Looking good. You can always count on Jonathan to look good. Um, one of, the biggest, one of the biggest reasons that we're up here right now talking to you guys about this book is Jonathan, for the last few months, had, with, with my mom and several people, have tediously, is that the word, tediously? Okay, good, I'm just making up words. Tediously gone through every word of this book, editing, the vision, 
Jonathan being here since the very beginning of all the transition and really what the book was about and walking with my family uh, you know, through a lot of the hardships, good times, ups and downs. So Jonathan, I'm gonna let you tell us what's going on with this book and, and officially launch this thing today. Sure. Well, if you think Brandon talked a long time, <laughs> oh Lord, start you the have timer. no idea start the what's timer. going on. You have I, no idea. Go. Just settle in and get some popcorn. <laughs> Um, you know, over the last, um, it was just over eight years ago uh, that I moved to Albuquerque. And as Dustin said, I watched the transition of Copper Point becoming what it is today. How many of you love our church? You love Copper Point Church. You know, I say our, and, and, and just a month or so ago, I was having lunch or dinner uh, with one of my dear friends from here in Albuquerque. They had come to Dallas and were visiting. And um, he said, you know, I noticed every time you reference Copper Point, you still say my church, our church, you know, we did this. Or we, and I, you know what I think? I think that's because no matter how far you go, um, Copper Point will always have such a big piece of your heart and will always be a part of who you are. It's, it's not a church you just come to, you know. A lot of us have walked into a, a building and we've walked out of a building. We've attended a church week after week and month after month, year after year. But when you walk into these doors, there's something different. Then there's something special about what God has done at Copper Point Church. And. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I've been in Dallas now for uh, nearing nine months or so uh, back home. And um, some of the, the greatest churches in our nation are in Dallas, Texas. Uh, the Bishop T.D. Jakes, uh, one of the greatest men of God on our planet today, I believe, is in Dallas, Texas. Ed Young, one of the front runners uh, in church progressive creative movements, is in our, is in our city in Dallas. And, and I've visited and I, and I, to so many of these churches since I've been back in this time. And it doesn't matter where I go, churches I visit around the nation, around, this war, around the world, some of the greatest that you could think of, there is not a more meaningful, connective worship experience than what we have here at Copper Point Church. And Copper Point Church is today what it is and where it is because of the vision that God gave one man. It, it's not, uh, I worded that very carefully. It's not one man's vision. It's the vision that God gave one man. And there's something to be said about a vision that God births in you. You know, we all have ideas and thoughts and we dream things while we're asleep or while we're, uh, you know, listening to a boring lecture. But there's something different about a God-birthed vision. And when you have a God-birthed vision and a God-birthed idea, that is what you need to make it through these hard times. Because it doesn't matter what comes against you. It doesn't matter the hell that you face. You can stand on what you know God has told you. You can stand on more than a daydream, but you can stand on that God-birthed vision. And we are here today because when Pastor Galen Woodward was 24 years old, he moved from the promised land of Texas. And to the wilderness. <laughs> and he's been wandering for <laughs> good Jesus. But when he came here 24 years ago, many of you have heard him tell the story. He went to a high peak in the city. And as he's looking over this great city, God spoke a vision into his heart. And through good times and through bad, he has stuck it out through, through it all because of the vision. And that is so much what this book is about. 
that is so much what this book is about. You see a glimpse into Pastor Galen's personal life. He re- tells and reveals things in this uh, that he has never, ever shared publicly. Uh, you, could, you could not imagine. You could not imagine. Try to imagine. It's worse. The hell that pastors go through. The hell that pastors go through. Your worst, your worst idea, it's worse than that. And, and I know everyone in here, you're, you're the good church people that don't ever say anything bad about your pastor. I know that none of those people are in this room this morning. And, and, and so you all, I want you all to help me in, in, in building up our pastor, in, in, in encouraging him in praying for him, in speaking encouragement and positivity to him because you can't imagine the negativity that comes to him every day through hate mail, verbally spoken from a church member or someone else. You you cannot cannot even fathom. You cannot even fathom. And so Pastor Galen in this book outlines a lot of what he's gone through to to, to be where we are today. But the story behind it is the the God-given purpose, that dream. And what he's trying to convey through all of this in this book, he talks about the story of First Family Church and becoming Copper Point Church. And, uh, you you know, whenever we did all the things that we did to make this great church what it is today, how all of that was the fulfillment of a dream because you remained faithful. Because there is always a blessing on the other side of sacrifice. And if you were not here in service last night, whenever we were fooling him, so he worked all week to prepare a great message, Mm -hmm. he did. And you need to go online and listen to it this week. Okay, you all promise me you'll listen to it this week? He preached last night, not knowing what was going on today, that there's always blessing on the other side of sacrifice. And we sit where we are today because of the sacrifice of our senior pastor and his wife, Kay Woodward. Amen. Amen. (laughs) He feels awkward. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So, so, so as I wrap up, I'm just going to say, I encourage everyone in this room. I have, I have labored. Uh, over this uh, over this book uh, in editing for the last couple of months and it's been one of the most joyous experiences of my life do you know why because I've been encouraged and built up the purpose in his sharing what he shared is not to air his dirty laundry no uh, it, it's 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 not to expose you know just that how bad church people are uh, you know some, some of it not, not y'all here today they're all the good ones you know you came to celebrate with us thank you for that the purpose of it all is to encourage you that whatever it is that God has placed in you, whatever the dream, whatever the purpose, whatever the desire, that when you put him first and sacrifice for the Lord, he will fulfill it. He will fulfill it. God never starts a work that he will not finish. And he never births a vision or a dream he doesn't see to pass. Yeah, what's really cool about it is it is his story. But I like how you just said that. But it's not... It's not directed towards people who just want to have a church story. It's for church people, pastors, but also for people who have a dream. Right. And they want to know what God can do in their life to make that dream happen. So go through the specifics for us, what we have today, what's in the atrium, how, how we're going to pre-launch this book today. Well, what we're doing is we have just finished the edit of, uh, of this book, um, our, uh, our, our, simple, our simple edit. Um, this week, we're, uh, we believe it's going to be go to the publisher and um, they're going to do a more extensive edit with, with all of their uh, grammatical freaks, you know, who, who will take out all the many commas that I put in. And <laughs> I love commas, y'all. I just, you just need to breathe sometimes in the middle of a sentence. I'm like, <gasps> and you just can't come up, you know? <laughs> you know? And so it, it's going to publishing this week. Um, and so in a matter of a couple of months, as they work on this, get it f- finally uh, edited, uh, printed, they're going to have it to us. So what we wanted to do today, and as, as we celebrate our pastor, uh, was to make that book available to you. 
Whenever you leave the uh, auditorium today, there's going to be, uh, there are going to be stations set up where you can pre-order your copy of Pastor Galen's book, Changing Church. Uh, we believe that this is not only going to be an incredible blessing for pastors all over our nation who are desiring to see an incredible change God use their church. Uh, there are an incredible number of churches closing their door every day and pastors leaving the ministry. We believe this is going to be a catalyst to begin that, ch to changing that so that we see more success than we do demise uh, in the kingdom of God. And so we're going to believe for churches to be empowered, pastors to be empowered, to change what they've got going on, and for you to be empowered to fulfill the vision God's given you. And so when you leave this room, uh, we want you to go out there, uh, pre-order this book. It is going to be a blessing to you. I promise you that it will be. Are you guys excited for this? Isn't this a cool thing? Well, hey, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, guys. Uh, we have a few more things, but are you guys having fun today? Isn't this fun? Okay, we'll take a look at this video. Hello, Galen and Kay. This is Ed and Lisa here wishing you a very happy 20th anniversary at Copper Point Church. We're so proud to be connected with you guys right. in ministry. And Ed, I know that you and I share the heartbeat of Galen and Kay with um, what ministry is all about, and that's reaching people for Jesus Christ. No question. Two God-made decades and two phenomenal people. Congratulations. We love you and look forward to seeing what God is going to do the best is yet to be. Happy anniversary. When I think of the great churches in America, Copper Point Church is one of the first I think of. And the reason is, is because of Pastor Galen Woodward and his beautiful bride, Miss Kay. 20 years, brand new church, myself, Cindy, we celebrate your excellent leadership. And what I love the most about Pastor Galen is this, the evidence of Christ in his marriage and in, in, in his family. We celebrate with you. Congratulations. If you ever need a janitor at Copper Point, I'll be happy to send my resume. We love you. Happy 20th. Hi, Galen and Kay. Congratulations on 20 years as senior pastors of Copper Point Church. What an achievement. What a wonderful ministry you have. What lovely people you are. Strong but humble people. And you've got a wonderful family. I've been so privileged to get to know you and spend time with you. And I feel honored that I could have been part of your world, especially over the recent weeks. I want to wish you the very best for the next season of your church. And I want to remind you that the very best is still yet to come. Keep going, keep honoring God, keep trusting Him for growth, and you're going to have an amazing future. I look forward to being part of that together with you, and I hope to see you soon again in South Africa. Hello there, Copper Point. I'm Mari Davis. I pastor Cornerstone Church in Nashville. And you may not remember me, but years and years and years ago, in 1983, I met your pastor and his young wife when they served as youth pastors at First Family Church, which was the launching place for the church you currently sit in. Pastor Galen and Kay gave me the first opportunity to travel and preach in ministry. I was able to stay in their home as a rookie preacher uncouth, unchurched in many ways. And down through the years, their friendship to me and my family has been incredibly special. I actually named my oldest son, Galen, after your pastor. What an incredible ride he's had being there for almost 30 years. It's unbelievable the tenure they've had, the changes they've led, and the people that still serve, that lead your church, that they mentored as they came into youth ministry as 12-year-olds. They have been a faithful, pastor and his wife. They have invested their life and the life of their family in the Albuquerque area. They love that church and we love them. So on their anniversary, I want you to give them a big shout out. Treat them the way they deserve to be treated. Love them the way they deserve to be loved. And know that I rejoice with you at another milestone reach. Pastor Galen, Sister Kay, I love you. Get the peanut butter jar ready. I'm coming to see you. Three, two, 
Pastor Galen and Kay, what an incredible accomplishment and honor for you. 30 years of ministry, and we cannot thank you enough for the impact you've made in our lives. And what an awesome impact that's been. In thinking about it, we don't know who we would be or where we would be in life or in ministry without your influence and leadership and, and friendship throughout the years. Really, there aren't enough words to be able to describe everything that you are and that you represent. Because I think about all the people that are honoring you this weekend. I think of all the years that you have sown into the kingdom. Everything you've done to build righteousness into others and to become incredible disciples. We know that you got there and you didn't think you were going to last very long. Well, not last, but you thought I wouldn't stay very long. Uh, and now God has really made it a lifetime. But look at the, the boys that are now in ministry with you. They're amazing families. You are of the highest caliber of anybody that we've ever met. We just want to leave you with this very simple message. Hi, Galen. Hi, Kay. It's Cy here in beautiful New Zealand. It is a winter day up here in the mountains, but certainly we're still sending warm greetings and congratulations to you guys on your 20th anniversary in ministry. Senior pastoring is a big responsibility, but you all do it with love and graciousness and with accuracy in the word that makes you wonderful examples and wonderful to be mentoring that awesome Copper Point family. We'll look forward to crossing paths again and serving you guys. Come on down and visit. We'll look forward to that. Again, every blessing from Karen and I to you. Congratulations. 20 years. How can that even be possible? Kay Woodward, you must have started when you were 12 years old. I just want to say congratulations. I'm thrilled and honored for you and Pastor Galen. What an incredible team. What an incredible church, Copper Point Church is. I'm happy for you, thrilled and honored to call you my friend. And I hope that you guys celebrate big. Congratulations on 20 years as the pastors of Copper Point Church. And I hope that we get together and create some trouble soon. Hey, Pastor Galen and Kay, we are so excited about two decades of ministry. Well Amazing. done. Amazing. We are so proud to be your friends. We're so excited you're just down the road from us. We're so excited to see the Copper Point Church continue to flourish. We do believe that your best decade is spread out in front of you. Thanks so much for your friendship and everything you've done to build the body of Christ in Albuquerque. I love, Lisa loves coming and being with your body because it is an amazing, vibrant, living church. We love you guys and we're so proud. God bless you guys. Could we give them the honor that Stu, let's honor our senior pastors one more time today. It's, it's so moving to see and hear all the stories and incredible. You guys may have a seat and at this moment we're going to ask all of our current board members and their spouses as well as our current pastoral staff and their spouses to, to head up on stage. Um, we have uh, just a couple more, more things that we want to do and kind of share with you. Uh, but I'm telling you, after hearing so many people speak, it gives you joy. And doesn't it give just great a sense of relief knowing that our senior pastor is the real deal, is a guy who lives his life out, not just to try to put on a face, but says this is ministry, it's in the home, it's in our lifestyle, it's at the church. What an incredible, incredible man and, and his wife, Kay. We are just so honored to, to serve underneath him, all of us. And we have a couple people that would like to, to share just a few more things. We have um, some of our, our current board members, but more than that, some of Pastor Galen and Kay's closest friends over the year that have grown up with them for years and years and years would like to share. We have uh, Bruce Stidworthy and his wife Tammy and David Gayona and his wife Cindy that would like to share uh, a few things with them as well today. Thank you, Adam. Um, we were just asked to share a little bit about um, the incredible friends that Pastor and Kay have been. Um, Tammy and I moved here almost 19 years ago, um, just newly married, didn't really know anybody, had no family here. Um, and it happened to be just a day or two before um, New Year's, and we were like, what are we going to do for New Year's Eve? We don't know anybody. 
Um, and we came to the church office um, and just asked, like, what's going on for New Year's? And we met Pastor and Galen. I mean, <laughs> that's what Adam did. Um, <laughs> Pastor Galen and Kay um, in the office. And uh, right there, they made us feel welcome and comfortable. And, um, and in the beginning, they were just our pastors. But very quickly thereafter, um, they became very close friends of ours. And, um, and even more than friends, we became like family to them. Um, and we didn't have any family here. And they would have us over at their house for holidays. And uh, we even sometimes went on vacation, when, you know, the same time they were going on vacation. And our families became very close. Um, and, and Tammy never had any sisters, she just had brothers, and Kay became like a sister. And when both of our children were born, um, Kay was in the room there and was just that support system. And it's been an incredible uh, relationship, incredible pastors, and more than that, incredible friends. Um, several years ago, um, our church used to do men's conferences up at Glorietta Conference Center. And uh, this is just a story that illustrates to me um, the kind of people that they are and the influence that they have in people's life. And it's like Karen talked about, there's lots of these stories in the room and, I, and I'm honored to be able to share this one. But um, I, I was rooming with Pastor there in that men's conference and, um, and his, his sons at that time, Dustin and, and Jonathan and Brandon were somewhere in their teens. But it was clear to me, even at that time, that they, um, that they were gonna grow up to be the men of God that you now see that they are. And um, I remember complimenting Pastor on that and saying, wow, um, you know, you should be proud of your boys. They're, gonna, they're incredible. And I said, um, I would be really honored if my kids follow in their footsteps and turn out like they're starting to turn out. And, um, and Pastor, you know, he talks a lot of times in his sermons about words of encouragement and about how powerful words are. And he spoke words that night. This is the hard part. I'm going to hold it together. Um, he spoke words that night that I'll never forget. He talked about um, how our kids would follow in our footsteps because we were following Christ. Um, and, and he spoke words that it was like, why do you even have any doubt uh, about your ability as a parent and about how God is going to take care of you? Um, and he just reminded me that as I follow Christ, my children will follow me. Um, and it, it was just those words that stick with you, and I became what he said, um, a godly parent. Um, and I didn't think of myself that way, but I became that way, and partly because of pastor's influence. Um, and the really amazing part of that story is that now our kids, um, Garrett and Caitlin, are uh, about the same age that his kids were at that time. Um, and we've had some challenges along the way, and they've been there right there to give us incredible advice, uh, to point us in the right direction, to encourage us. And so I just want to say thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Kay. Well, since everybody said everything that I was going to say, <laughs> no, we've, we've known... Uh, Galen and Kay for 30, 32 years. As a matter of fact, we were there the very first day that <laughs> I'm a big old baby. <laughs> <laughs> we helped them move in and, and I guess uh, from something that happened that day, it was, uh, I guess it was destiny that I, I would become good friends with him. Because I don't know if you remember, 30 years ago, it was really cool to have a, uh, a wooden spoon and a wooden fork hanging in the kitchen. I don't know if you guys remember that. And, and, and Kay was really liking these things, and I was helping him move in, and man, I broke the fork. <laughs> and... Uh, and later on, Galen said, hey, man, don't worry about it. I really didn't like those all that much anyways. <laughs> but, you know, together we've, uh, we've been through so many good and great times. And thankfully, only a handful of uh, bad times. But through it all, I've come to know these things about, 
about Galen and Kay. You've always been faithful friends. So many times we have laughed together until we've cried. And a few times we've cried together through some of the curveballs life throws at you. But through it all, he and Kay have always been there with us. And for that, Cindy and I will forever be grateful. He's taught me how to be a better husband. I'd only been saved a couple of years before they moved here. So I really didn't have a very good base, a godly base in which to love Cindy. Truth be told, I was pretty much a jerk. <laughs> but uh, through Galen's example, I, uh, I was able to follow in his footsteps and through his encouragement, and after 33 years of marriage, I'm, I'm about got a handle on this marriage thing. <laughs> He's taught me how to be a better father. As his own kids have said, both he and Kay were at all of their events, supporting them and encouraging them. I watched how they loved their kids. And through their example, I was able to love and support my own kids in ways that I know I would not have done otherwise on my own. I shudder to think about all the lost memories that would have happened had it not been for you two. For that, we thank you so much. Another thing I know about Galen is that he does not have a personal agenda. He has devoted his entire life to carry out God's will, both in his life and the life of Copper Point Church. Everything he has done has been uh, to, to fulfill what God has called him to do. He certainly could have just stayed with status quo and lived a very comfortable life, as you've, you've heard testimony already. But God had other plans for Copper Point Church. Galen has been like Joshua. He's been relentless in carrying out God's will, even when it came at great personal cost to he and his family. Thank you, Galen and Kay, for not taking the easy road. But the most important thing that I know about Galen, and this has been already stated, he lives what he preaches. Too often in today's uh, culture, both leaders outside the church and inside the church, they don't practice what they preach. This can be one of the most damaging things to the body of Christ. But I can stand here before God and say this about Galen Woodward. This man is a man of integrity. He has never, never asked this church to do anything that he is not already practicing in his own life. This is truly extraordinary for these days. And, and I guess I would just end in this. Proverbs 20 verse 7 says, The righteous man walks in integrity. Blessed are his children after him. We have a, a, a special presentation to, to them on behalf of our uh, entire church congregation, the board of directors here. So uh, here to kind of help do that, Austin DeHogue has, a, has a, a special letter that he wants to read to our pastors. Uh, good morning. I'm Austin DeHogue. I'm on the board uh, here at Copper Point Church. Um, 
Wow, what an amazing service, and we just uh, want to honor Pastor with, uh, with this service. So um, if this is your first time attending here, we really do want to say welcome. Uh, we really do hope that you find today's service as a testament um, of how much respect, how much appreciation, and how much honor we have for our senior pastor and his wife here at Copper Point Church. Um, they've served here for 32 years, uh, and they've truly poured their entire lives into this church. Today, I'm honored to announce that we are presenting our pastors with a gift, uh, a gift that's been in the making for over a year by our church staff, a, tr uh, a gift that's been, that's really been a dream gift up until a few weeks ago and has truly become a reality. So a very, very special thanks to all our very generous donors who made this dream gift uh, come true. Today's service is not about a gift, it's about honor um, and gratitude to a husband and wife team that have served so sacrificially, so selfishly, or selflessly. Uh, <laughs> selflessly. Um, this is the, uh, sorry. The service is to honor the man as one of the most caring and genuine and loving men that I've ever met. He has such a humble heart that I know he will reluctantly accept this this gift. The service is to show honor, gratitude, and how much we love this extraordinary couple who has brought us as a church, as imperfect people, to a perfect God. So on behalf of the church staff, the church board, our generous donors, and our entire church family here, we're excited and honored to present this very special thank you gift to Pastor Galen and Kay Woodward. If Pastor Galen and Kay could please come and join us on stage, and please help me welcome them. Absolutely. We're going to let them speak in a little bit, but something that you don't realize is every single year there's a Pastor Appreciation Month that comes every October, and never once has he ever let us celebrate it because he's like, I don't want the attention on me. I don't, I don't want, and he's always reluctant just said it's, it's about the church it's about you guys as you've heard over and over and so today is an opportunity for us to come and say honor is due to these people honor is due so we know coming into this building has been a sacrifice for so many people and pastor galen and Kay have been the leading front on sacrificing so much uh, monetarily, financially, with their blood, sweat, and tears to help make this place a reality, and for years have had to put off so much stuff, and so it is our honor and privilege to be able to present Pastor Galen and Kay, with, to be able to completely redo and give them brand new kitchen appliances, completely courtesy of BIOS, made possible by BIOS, a new kitchen appliance package which they have been trying to for a long time, but have had to hold off over and over. So, <laughs> Kay's excited. It's been a long time, and she knows the, it's been so having to put off over and over and over again, but it doesn't stop there. Our, our pastor has had a dream and a vision, and we've heard over and over, he always, uh, he'll see these coming around and th just wanting it, but never being able to and, and giving. And so it is our honor and privilege to be able to honor our pastor today with his brand new 2013 Ford F-150.
whoever said it, they're absolutely right. I have a hard time receiving. And, and I, I want to tell you, that, that, that goes so far, far beyond what I, I could have ever imagined. And, and guys, I, I love you dearly. Hey, won't you have a seat for a moment? You know, I, uh, I, I, I love you guys. Wow, wow. Um, you know, I feel very naive, and let me just say dumb, in many, many ways. I, uh, I don't know how you pull off something at this scale, and I had zero idea about this. Uh, last night, I, I preached, and I worked hard on a sermon. I got up early, early this morning, and I was tweaking and praying and, and getting ready to lay one on you this morning. And, and, um, and then Jonathan Flores, being in town, wanted to take me to breakfast, and so we went downtown to a hotel and uh, we had breakfast, and he ordered these huge pancakes and was eating extremely slow. And I kept <laughs> looking at my watch and think, come on. And, and I mean, it, it rolled around till it was almost 10 o'clock, and we're sitting at the restaurant. And I'm saying, Jonathan, eat the pancakes. I mean, just come on. And, you know, and I had no idea that all of this was going on, and he was freaking me out. And and so I was in the side room, and I was cramming just for the last few minutes for the, you know, for the sermon, and then they're yelling at me to come out on stage, and I walk out, and when everyone's standing, I had no idea that this was my 20th anniversary, no idea that any of this was going on, and, and I, I leaned over to Dustin, and I said, what is this about? You know, what, what is this about? And, and, and guys, I... Uh, I cannot express in words how much I love you, what you mean to me. I think about you every single day. I dream of what God's going to do through us. What I realized that after pastoring for 20 years, that, that this is the foundation that God has, has laid for us. I'm, I'm very, very... I'm very excited about you reading this book because it's a story about you. And, and I think when you read this story, it's going to open your eyes to what God has done and what God is about to do in this place. Guys, when it comes to the gift that you have given and, you know, the appliances, I was applauding that because, because a, a happy wife is a, is a happy life. And, um, you know, and, and, and I was great with that. You're helping me have a great life, but this, this is so beyond, and, and, and there's no way I could ever, ever express my gratitude, my thanks. I mean, there, there are not words, and, 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 you know, you never feel worthy. You never feel like, like you, you add up to what you have done, but, love you. but uh, <laughs> I love you, too. <laughs> I love all of you, and, and guys, it, it, has been, it has been an amazing 20 years, and and, you know, Kay and I have, have enjoyed every step of the way. And all I want to say as we, as we come to an end this morning is that, that I love you. Guys, as you heard so many times, the best is yet to come. We're going to do it together. Guys, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Well, you know, I want to say something. Hang on a second. Um, the, the 20 years ago when he was actually elected as pastor, our little boys were up here with us, and they were five and and two and Brandon was a baby or something like that anyway and it was funny because we had the big 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 brown pulpit you know we were standing behind the pulpit and we'd just been voted in and what I was just doing to you nudging in to get to the microphone that's what Dustin did he was a little boy and he kept inching his way to get the microphone he wanted the microphone then and he still wants it today and that's awesome but I just want to say I mean as a partner in ministry with Galen for the last 32 years here and, and 20 years we didn't know what we were biting off when we said yes 20 years ago in 1993. And um, I got to know, a little, I just knew that this was happening today. I had no idea what was happening in this service, but they had to let me know something so we could keep him surprised. Because you know, for I'll, I'll tell you um, what I told the staff is I wanted today to be such a day of honor for you because I watched him um, put his own personal wishes and wants and desires and agenda to the back for all these years. And let other people take the glory and the credit. And, and you know, I've just, over the years, and watched it and watched it and watched it, said, no, okay, we're not going to, um, you know, we're not going to do pastor appreciation this year. We're not going to take a raise. I want to hire staff. I want to give them a raise. These little young guys are starting out. They need it. And I've watched it and watched it. And I'm over there going, no, tell them you want one. No, tell them you want one. That's, that's really what I do. And so, um, 
But I watched and watched and watched, and I kept telling them, if, if my husband is honored today, then it's a good day, and our church is honored. And let me just say, the honor you bestowed on both of us today is unbelievable. I have never felt in my life, ever, felt this much love and this honored, and I, and I feel it for you. And I will say, I'm kind of a mess to live with at times. I know, y'all can find that hard to believe. And we've walked through a lot of me. We've been married 32 years in January, and um, it's, you know, all been here. And, you know, our kids have been raised in this church, baptized here, married in this church. I'm so glad this wasn't our funeral. I was really glad when they're passing by us that I'm giving to hear this and live it, and it's not my funeral that y'all are saying this. Thank you for doing this while we're living. And um, (laughs) thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Really. And... I, I will say, he is the kindest, most godly, the best example, and I will tell you, you can follow. He's a person, and he's human, and he messes up. Can I get mad at him, too? But you can follow this man where he takes his church because he is following God, and I can tell you that as his wife. You are blessed. I am blessed. Thank you. I, I've never felt so wonderful in my whole life. I've just never felt, and I'm so glad to feel this. Aren't you? I'm so glad to feel this. Thank you guys. Thank Thank you guys so much.